we're back. Leg day today. Big leg day. Just playing. I like to say big in front of the lift to make it seem bigger than it is, but in reality, today is actually probably going to be a small leg day. Uh, kind of short on time. Um, and on top of that, I my knees. I don't know what's wrong with my knees. I can't do many movements. I there's pain with it. I'm not going to push through joint pain. That's just stupid. Like, I'm not going to push through joint pain and risk a bigger injury or you know something worse. So possibly do leg press again. Leg extension, leg curls are uh, an absolute guarantee. Now, the only guarantee of this lift, too, is that we'll have 11 sets which eat with each uh, 11 sets with each muscle group. So, 11 sets of quads, 11 sets of extensions. For pre today, we got the bombsicle C4. Unfortunately, that gas station had no rain, which blows for today because I really really needed that extra 100 milligrams of caffeine. Thankfully, they had more than skills. Um, yeah, I need to figure out what's going on with my knees. Like, this is... I don't like skipping movements because of pain, but again, like, I'm not going to push through joint pain. And I have. I pushed through joint pain my entire prep. Through Like, it's just... I don't know what it is. I've tried collagen. I've tried rehab for runner's knee not like actual rehab but looking up movements in my room and doing them and at the gym um maybe i'll try that again and the collagen again and try everything at the same time try to do it but it's always the front of my knee which is about the patellar tendon is where it hurts and it's annoying it sucks i want to be able to squat again i want to be able to do these pressing movements um because my entire life i neglected the legs and now I want to hit them and I can't it's real tragic I've been getting the itch to compete again I've been wanting to compete again I competed last April lost got like sixth um, but I want to compete again it's I'll be honest bodybuilding is the most homosexual sport there is uh, you are training very hard for four or five months to get on stage with a bunch of other guys that have been training hard uh, wearing underwear, and then you're being judged based on how you look by other guys sitting below you. Like, it's a very gay sport, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it is it is pretty homosexual. It's, but that, besides the point, I've been wanting to compete again, uh, even though, like, it sucks, it's not fun, you miss out on a lot. But I feel like through those times of, like, absolute suck, I just evolve as a human being. Like, I want that again and this time going into it with the knowledge of how it went last time like I would definitely win like this is just purely for my own sake like just a redemption tour um but like right now like realistically my lean body weight is probably about 185 the last show was about 176 um which I know sounds crazy and that's way too much muscle we put on but I swear to you like I'm so much bigger than I was my show well, obviously, but more muscular. I have so much more muscle. Like, I'm very vascular right now for 201. Like, um, so I think if I cut down, I'd, I'd look absolutely nuts this time. Um, and then again, like, I know what to do now. So go into it with more core training. I think I would have a solid shot at winning. Only thing with that is I can't compete in novice anymore. Uh, maybe, maybe I can. I just can't compete in a true novice. Right? Because novice is just not winning a show. True novice is never competing in your life. So I might I might be able to compete in that. We'll have to look into that. Pre Rice Krispie Treat. I've seen a lot of videos um, on Sam Solik, like bashing Sam Solik. Now I love Sam Solik, don't get me like I think he's probably the greatest fitness influence of our generation he's amazing good sounds like a good dude dude's fucking jacked he reps two or 315 on incline like it's 225 like he's nuts um but what's crazy about sam Solik is you have these fucking 50 year old fossil meatheads like greg Doucet and these other guys making a video on every breath this dude makes like 
oh, he's so unhappy, or he's so unhealthy, he's gonna kill himself. Like, bro, let the dude live. Like, these fucking fossil meatheads are out here bashing Sam Solid for the shit that they were 100% doing when they were on the come up and trying to become a bodybuilder. They were out there eating fucking food like that, trying to get as many calories as they can, as they can to grow. Like, all these bodybuilders were doing that, and they're going to come out here and make videos uh, bashing Sam Solid. Now, what it really is is just them cloud chasing. They want to, you know, get views off of Sam's name, which, hey, I mean, it's whatever. But the hypocrisy is ridiculous. Like, if you're going to do that, at least cloud chase respectfully, not by just trashing someone's name. Like, Greg Doucette literally makes a video on every breath that dude makes. Um, like, Sam just posted that uh, day in a life of eating uh, for his cut. I guarantee you Sam's, or, uh, Greg Doucette's going to find a problem with something in there. That's just my shit, Sam. I think it's crazy. Woke up at like 11 this morning. Really do need to get on a better schedule here soon. But like between school, now work, like I want to sleep in when I have the opportunity, you know? It's also gains, sleeping in, getting some extra sleep. So. Today I am straight bumming it. I woke up, like I said, at 11. I didn't even change my shorts, just kept them on. Put on a long sleeve and a sweater. And here we are. It's like the weirdest thing in the world too. I've been listening to some weird music in the gym lately. Like, not as much rap, more like, uh, I've been listening to some weird music, like not as much rap, more like some Zach Bryan, um, Adele. I've been listening to Adele in the gym. It's been weird, um, which is weird because I'm not even like going through anything. It's just the music's hitting. I feel like it's like sometimes like sad music or like not necessarily sad music, but different genres of music hit in the gym. I was listening to Horse with No Name the other day, pretty religiously. It's crazy, just like the new, the different sounds. Yeah, okay, start that new job today. Um, like I said, I'm going to work out and I have to be there at like 4. So, depending on what time I get done, I'll try to edit this and post it so I don't have to do that when I get home. And when I get home from work, I can just study. Um, but we'll see how that goes. We shall see how that goes. Oh, fuck. I wanted to fucking... Damn it. I wanted to cook ground beef before I left, but I didn't. Dang it. What you get for waking up late, unprepared. Uh, we're also probably gonna hit calves today. Probably gonna hit calves today. Do I go for it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Where is it? I went for it and I got it. Um. Yeah, probably gonna hit calves afterwards. Gonna hit core first, obviously. Probably not gonna film that because I think today I'm gonna be lazy and just hit the um, machine curl. Or, yeah, the machine curls. And then get into either leg press or just go straight to leg curls. I like starting with the leg curl. Because when you start with the leg curl, you can maintain the quad pump by hitting the quads last which is like the best part of the leg pump. It's having your quads pumped up. But being honest too, like the calf pump is pretty good too. It's just brutal the day after. That's the worst leg day pain, especially when you get the cramps in your calves. That's also terrible. But the quad and calf pump are probably in the top 10 list of pumps you can have. Maybe top eight. Maybe top seven. I mean, obviously, I think like a bicep pump's number one. Triceps is number two. Chest, three. Lats, four. Delts, five. Actually, quads, probably six. And I'd say cab seven, being honest with you. I'm probably forgetting something that I would absolutely love. Uh, forearm pump, but those are rare in between 
Um, but yeah, probably six and seven on the top 10 chart of pumps for the quads and calves. Um, but yeah, enough of that. I'm gonna head in there. <sighs> I work out. Tired. Yeah. Tired. Tired as shit. Yeah, I'm gonna go work out. Hopefully wake up at some point and uh, hit some legs. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in there. Leaning forward on this movement, so you can posture a little more upright. It's, uh, it gives a better stretch on the hamstrings, kind of similar to kind of similar to an RDL. Like when you keep your back erect and upright, it puts a greater stretch on the hams. Um, so if you try that, you lean forward on the leg curl, you'll feel a lot more. You'll be a lot more sore. Um, just get more to turn on your side. All right, just finished up. If I had to rate that leg day on a scale of one being terrible and 10 being amazing, I'd probably give it a six. Um, I think low calories, I mean like, I need to stop using that as an excuse, um, but it's just my fault because I'm like, just being an absolute idiot with my nutrition right now. Uh, not in the sense I'm eating unhealthy, but the fact that I am waking up at 11 a.m eating five eggs, which is 300 calories, um, and a Greek yogurt, which is 120 calories, very little carbs, and then going to the gym. I actually, I did have a Rice Krispie Treat, but I mean, still, it's probably like, what, 30 grams of carbs? I need to clean it up. Not clean it up, but just get more carbs in before my workout, and I guarantee it'd be a lot better. Um, 
But yeah, six out of ten leg day. I got the G. Let me through. Uh, six out of ten leg day. Um, on the quad, a pro tip. Here's a pro tip that my bodybuilding coach gave me on quad extensions. A lot of us just stop kind of like before parallel. Uh, but if you come straight up and almost like bring your leg off of the machine, so you're extending like almost they're coming up off the, the pad a little bit, you get much better quad contraction and you feel it light up after like three or four reps. Like you can feel every muscle of the quad working on that extension. You give it a nice pause, you'll those will blow your legs up. And my quads have probably doubled in size this year. Um, partially because I've been a lot more consistent with hit them, with hitting them, but also fine tuning how I do the exercises. Because if you're doing exercises wrong, you're not going to see much of a benefit or as many gains as you can. Uh, whereas if you do it right, obviously you're going to see more gains. So extending, fully extending off the leg extension is a great tip. A lot of people probably don't do that. Well, not that I see, honestly, like I see a lot of people not doing that. Uh, another one, this one's from Sam Solik, but on the leg curls, uh, like leaning forward and hugging the handles so that your upright gives you a much better stretch on the hamstrings and just lights them up. So it's just like little modifications to your routine like that, that, you know, it's a very small tweak in the workout, but after a whole month of working out, that's eight to 10 different exercises, different lifts that you've made that huge improvement on, or you made that tiny improvement on, that's going to equal a huge improvement later on. Um, and that's actually really a great metaphor for life. You make all these small changes each day. It may not be big in the day, but over time, it, it compounds. Uh, so yeah, those two little tips for the leg day. Uh, I'm going to go home. It's 2.06. Got to leave here probably like 3.40. Probably pound. This is probably the best move here. Is probably pounding 50 grams of protein via shake, showering, getting ready, cooking up some ground turkey, an egg or two, and a Greek yogurt. I just need some sort of fucking carbs. Like it's I can't. I'm gluten intolerant, so I can't eat gluten without getting sick. So finding carb sources is terrible. Uh, my carb sources yesterday morning or two mornings ago was literally Lucky Charms, just because it was like the only thing I could find where I had time to eat real quick, where it wasn't like, you know, I didn't have to cook rice or quinoa, like I could just put it, I could just eat it, uh, which is not a great carb source, but it did work. I did have a good pump yesterday or two days ago. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Getting a little bit of heat on my last video for talking about um, people that wanna be transgender, having the ability to get hormones, but people that want more muscle uh, have, are not able to get hormones uh, just for the fact they want more muscle, which I think is pretty, it's a fair assessment. Like you can get hormones because you feel like you're a woman, but you can't if you want more muscle, if you feel like you should have more muscle. See what I'm saying? There's a disconnect there. Uh, but I was getting backlash on that, which, you know, I guess like any type of opinion like that, a lot of people are... Um, pretty polarized on but I mean it's not even really opinion it's just the objective objective view of the hypocrisy with that type of stance and uh, thought process but hey but yeah good lift got work today gonna study later tonight so busy busy day um, what's nice about not having a rain is that I can do another 200 millis of caffeine before work and not bugged and tweaked out so i will do that i have school tomorrow now underrated opinion school is really not that bad i mean depending on like obviously like i don't like having to be at my 9 30 all the time because i'm i don't like waking up early it's my greatest weakness um but besides like having to get there at 9 30 it's not a it's like it's not bad like you just sit there kind of just listen to them lecture a little bit there are times where it is bad like if you're tired um listening to a lecture, I mean, you're going to fall asleep. Uh, but that's where caffeine comes in. It's where, you know, energy drinks like Celsius and rain, it's where they make their money. Um, Red Bull. Red Bull, so I'm very picky with my energy drinks. And it's funny because I've had conversations with my friends and we all agree on this. So like Celsius is like a daily drinker, right? Like you're just drinking that. Like if you are going to go to the store, uh, it's essentially a coffee. 
right? A Celsius is a coffee. Now we get into like rain, C4, ghost. A ghost is also a daily drinker, but it can double for at the gym. Uh, but uh, C4, rain, and sometimes ghost, those are all gym drinks. Like those are pre-gym drinks, right? And then you have your Red Bulls, you have Monster, I don't really mess with, but Red Bull, that's like your party drink. That's like you're going out to the bar drink. It's just like funny how like each of these energy drinks have certain roles. And it's, like, it's just funny because like, I feel like a lot of people would also agree with that. Like Celsius, you're not pounding before the gym. It's not going to really do much for you. Uh, Ghost does have some like good pump blends. Uh, but the other like Rain and C4, those are gym drinks. Uh, that's my two cents on those. I'm, a, I'm an energy drink fanatic, if you cannot tell. I drink a lot of them, probably about two a day for the past three or four years. Um, and, you know, I've seen a lot of benefits from it. And I don't plan to stop. I think that energy drinks get a bad rap. Um, like, what's the difference between me going to Dunkin', getting a 200 calorie, three, 250, 250 calorie caramel swirl iced coffee with cream, or me getting a zero calorie energy drink that has 200 milliliters of caffeine, right? It's you're, it's kind of a trade-off because obviously like all those like artificial sweeteners that are, and not all energy drinks have them, but a lot of them do. It's a trade-off because you're either, you know, absorbing the hit of like 60 grams of sugar or some artificial sweeteners. Um, and personally, I choose the artificial sweeteners. Uh, and that's not to say like I'll sometimes pound coffee in the morning. Uh, I actually just drink my coffee black. Uh, I think it's the best, like especially served hot. Now, if I go to like a, like a Dunkin' or Starbs, I'm getting flavoring. But if I'm just going, like if I'm making it at the house, I'm just putting, I'm just drinking it black. Sometimes I'll even just put ice cubes in it so I can just chug it real quick and get going. Um, but yeah, no, I think that it, I don't like when people make that comparison. I could be biased because I love energy drinks, but I, I'm not a fan of that comparison. But pulling into the house now, I'm going to, like I said, pound some protein, um, get cleaned up, make some food, and go to work. I'm gonna try to edit this while I'm getting ready and everything um, but worst case scenario this video will be posted tonight so i'll catch you later follow me on instagram subscribe dude like subscribe tell your friends share me don't share me but share the channel um and yeah deuces